So good morning, everyone. Um, my name is John Lorenzo. I'm the head of cloud platform in uh, Iberia. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the cloud platform, what it is uh, from uh, Google's perspective. But uh, most importantly, what we're going to be doing is uh, actually show you how can this be used by a startup in order to make money, which is uh, probably the, uh, the main reason why everybody starts a startup, which will be actually to, to be able to live out of it. So uh, having said that, I mean, uh, probably you're familiar with these two guys. They started a company like uh, in 1998 called Google. And they started doing something what, which uh, was called uh, Google Search. Uh, what these guys wanted to do really was uh, organize the world's information, make it universally accessible and useful. Can you imagine what was the amount of things that these guys had to, wa uh, to walk through read through and do in order to, make a, uh, to be able to do uh, and live up to this uh, mission statement. That was a nightmare. Uh, it was a nightmare basically because uh, the world's information is quite a lot. Uh, we are growing like uh, we, we doubled the size of the information that we're using every two years. Uh, that was the last statistic I read last night. Um, so having said that, I mean, um, when you design a data center and you have to think about the amount of things that you have to be doing there, is, uh, is amazing. I mean, first of all, uh, if you go to the networking part, of the, the hardcore part of a data center, it's uh, a huge network uh, that you have to put in place. So these two guys approached a couple of big uh, networking guys and said, I need you know, uh, a computation matrix that can actually do this for me. I have to move these X amounts of petabytes of information in, uh, in between a data center. So they said, sorry, no can do. So these two guys have to go back to the university, uh, talk to guys, say, we have to design something that will work for us, uh, because there's no way that we can actually handle all this information uh, within the normal way that uh, we do these things. So they went back to the university, pen, pencil, um, piece of paper, write down. And that was the beginning uh, of a white paper, which actually uh, was the inception of something called SDN, if you are familiar with it. That's the software-defined networks. We're basically one of the first live examples of a uh, software-defined network. Um, moreover, on top of that, we had to build servers. I mean, uh, we have to serve information, make it universally accessible, means that uh, there will be people connecting from every place in the world to virtually any place in the world. So uh, we approach the big guys in the industry and say, hey, guys, we need servers like uh, by millions a month, uh, sorry, no can do. So uh, Google had to start manufacturing its own servers. We are number, I believe we are the third largest uh, server manufacturer in the industry. We only f uh, manufacture servers for ourselves. So it's just imagine the amount of challenges that we have to uh, uh, actually face when we wanted to, uh, to create all these. So basically, uh, this is just to let you uh, share with you that the, the infrastructure that we built, exactly the same infrastructure that we are uh, using every single day when we use Google Search or Gmail or Maps, uh, basically this is the infrastructure that we are sharing with each and every stra startup that wants to work with us. So we basically ho hold no differences in between data centers or the ones that we use and the ones that used, are used by, by other people. Another interesting fact about us is that uh, we like to respect the environment. So basically, we try to build our data centers whenever we have uh, renewable sources of energy close by, so we can use green sources of energy. That's point number one. And point number two, I don't know if you're familiar with the way we uh, actually cool our data centers, but we normally water cool our data centers, means that we don't use air conditioning. Uh, in terms of uh, being able to actually reduce the carbon footprint that we do and try to be 100% carbon neutral on those things. Um, another thing that's pretty interesting, I believe, for everybody is that we have our own fiber cable connecting, our own fiber network connecting uh, our data centers. That's pretty important. It's pretty important because uh, due to latencies, I mean, there's a big difference in being the owner of the whole bandwidth that you're using and sharing that information or sharing that, uh, that cable with uh, someone else. Just to show you a little bit how it works or what we have now, uh, just um, we have a uh, nice 
cable that's connecting the west coast of the United States and Japan. We are also connecting Boca Raton in Florida with uh, Fortaleza and Recife in Brazil. Well, there's a lot of investment there. We're investing as well in a new uh, data center that's been built in uh, uh, Emshaven, sorry, the name is a bit difficult for me. Uh, Emshaven in the Netherlands. Uh, we are investing something like uh, on the verge of $750 million on, on a new data center. We also have a data center in Hamina. We have a data center in Belgium. Basically, we're investing a lot of money, but w w what's in it for you? I mean, the idea is that all that we do is just a huge infrastructure that's going to be working for you and for us. And that's m the main idea that we have. Just to give you an impression of what we do in terms of, in terms of cloud, uh, basically, uh, we have like three, three big areas where we are actually focused most on, which are compute, storage, and analysis. Just a one-minute pitch on this. Uh, in the compute area, we can talk about Compute Engine, we can talk about, about App Engine. Compute Engine will be something much more on the infrastructure as a service area. App Engine will be more a platform as a service area. But we, if you want, I mean, you can come uh, over to the booth and we can show you a little bit around the, this technology. We also do storage. Storage as a traditional storage, which will be the cloud storage, or Cloud SQL, which will be a managed uh, MySQL database uh, in the cloud, or Cloud Data Store, which will be some, uh, based in uh, a technology that we also delivered called Dremel uh, quite some time ago. And this is basically like a huge container where you can actually gather all the information you need, and it will be used either for App Engine or on the analysis side would be used by uh, BigQuery. Just a couple of examples before I get uh, uh, onto Raul. A uh, couple of examples of companies uh, that are working with us on the cloud platform. Angry Birds, I mean, you are all familiar with the Angry Birds, uh, mostly. Um, this is a company that basically is uh, basing all its, uh, all, all its uh, design and all its coding is based on, on Compute Engine. Uh, on the other uh, end, this is a very interesting company. This is a very interesting thing. Uh, Snapchat. Snapchat is delivering more than 700 million photos and videos daily. Has more than 3 million daily average users. And it's all run by seven developers. That's all they have. Uh, amazing, but uh, they do focus on their code. I mean, they are not interested on driving a fancy stuff in terms of data center. What they do is just be concentrated on their code, on their new app that they have to launch, and that's it. Uh, and without any further ado, I'm going to get you onto Wimi5. Wimi5 is a startup, very promising, I have to say, but was born in July 2014. They already have more than 5,300 developers using the web app, uh, editor in real time. And basically, this is a, a, a huge uh, platform uh, that uh, helps uh, indie developers or game developers uh, to build their games and try to monetize those games. Uh, so, uh, without any further ado, I would like to integrate. Uh, I, I would like to um, welcome uh, Raúl Otalia on stage and uh, ask him to present his platform. Please, Raúl. Thank you, John. Let me a couple of seconds. Okay. Hello. Okay, hello. My name is uh, Raul Tablea. I am a co-founder and CEO at uh, WIMI5. Uh, I'm afraid that we don't have a slot for question at the end of this session, so if you contact me, please, uh, here, uh, take note about my email, raul at wimi5.com, and my Twitter. Okay. So, um, uh, Wimi5 is a very small startup located in Bilbao in the north of Spain, and we were born uh, last year with a very uh, clear vision. And, and this vision is the one you can read under our logo. It's that the web is the next game platform, in addition to the existing ones like PC, mobile, uh, 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 or console platforms. But with 
unique characteristics that make it different and with a huge potential. And we envision this thanks to HTML5, because after 15 interminable years, finally, last October, HTML5 became a final standard. And it was great news, because for the first time in the history of the standard, it, it uh, now provides a very cool set of technology that were previously only available uh, through native uh, technologies. And Probably the most important feature of the standard is its uh, cross-platform nature because it open, opens the door to the mobile world. And if we take into account that in the next 10 years, 4 billion with B people will connect to the internet for the first time and that will do that using their mobiles, it means a deep impact in the game industry. So in summary, HTML5 is uh, creating, opening a new future still to be explored. So what's the problem? The problem is that uh, the HTML5 is so new that there are very few tooling uh, to create web games and almost all of them are focused on, de on developers, on programmers. And unlike uh, traditional marketplaces uh, where there, are, there is maybe one or two marketplaces in the web, there are hundreds hundreds of marketplaces and it's difficult to, to know them all and it's very time consuming to integrate with them. And it, it is also the case with uh, payment gateways. Uh, there are, in the web, there are a wide variety of company, companies providing this kind of, of services and again, you have to know them all and integrate with them. And all these things are a problem for game developers. Especially if you are an indie game developer, maybe creating the next killer game, or maybe you are a, a digital agency who is creating advert gaming to add value to uh, their marketing campaigns, or maybe you are a student uh, learning uh, the coming or the needed technologies to create web games. So taking all this in mind, in Women5 we have created a cloud-based platform easy to use to create, publish, and monetize web games that is based in, in, very, in six simple ideas. Faster development, because you, have, you don't have to program, everything, everything is visual. More audience, because we are talking about hundreds of marketplaces. Better monetization, because you don't have to integrate with anything, you only f focus on uh, designing your in-app purchases. Higher engagement, because we create auto automatically um, uh, uh, engagement tools like ranking, for example, game analytics so that you can monitor in real time how your uh, game is working, and uh, you can start for free, completely for free. So, and it is a good thing, of course. Let me show you a demo. So this is this is my dashboard when you sign in in the in Win5. This is this is a website. It's 100% in HTML5. I'm going to create um, a very simple example of this. So I have created a, a game from scratch, and now I am choosing uh, an icon. Okay, this is the icon. I'm going to demo four years from now. I'm going to create also two virtual goods. One and two. The, this one will be a bomb. 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 And this one will be crucifix. It's about evils and monsters, so crucifixes are. Okay, this one is five euros, and this one, one euro. And I have already a ranking made automatically for me, and I now go to the editor. It is coming. 
So uh, we have a split the, the editor in two parts. This, this one is for to create the logic, and this other one is to create the scenes. So creating things is just downloading your uh, resources. So in this case, I'm going to download um, a background and, and a sprite sheet. OK, so this is my background. I'm going to put it in 0, 0. Maybe, yes, scale. And here I have a sprite sheet. This is a, a cool enemy. This is a monster. But I'm not interested in the, in the sprite sheet. What I want to do is a, a, a sprite. So I'm going to create this sprite. Oh, sorry, this monster. with an animation of fly. I'm going to say that this uh, sprite is based in, in this image, and the default animation is fly. OK, and now I'm going to define the animation that I know about memory, so it's like 622, nine frames, loop, it maybe Okay, I'm going to, so now if I drag and drop this, I have a cool monster here made rest very, very quickly. Okay, it's, as you can see, it's everything about drag and dropping and, and creating your scenes, and here you have the, uh, the, the tree explaining what you are doing. So I'm going to go back to the uh, editor so the editor is about uh, dragging and connecting boxes. So in this case, I'm going to say that each time I press my left button, uh, I want to move uh, my monster. I want to clone my monster. I want to clone in this, in this layer. So I'm going to connect this with this. And then I want to move it. Um, for example, I'm going to, this is, the clone, I want to move seconds in one second from position, from the position, original position of the, of the original monster and to the click position, okay? And I have to connect this. This is the first event. So programming is connecting boxes. Let's, let's see if, if, it, if it works, yeah. I'm going to put it here. Yeah. Yeah, it is a very, very simple example of, of what we can do, OK? OK, I'm going to add very two things. Like uh, when I press the space bar, I want to show you uh, the, the card with the virtual goods we have already defined in the, in the previous desktop. And I want also to show the ranking when I press the oops, W, no, uh, R. OK, and in this case, I want to show the rankings. So you can see that there are a lot of categories. In category, uh, you can find a lot of black boxes to do different things, so show ranking. And once you have done this, you can deploy just with one, with uh, one click and test it in the web. So now I have another tab, and this is already in the web. So you can share this URL through WhatsApp, email, or whatever you want. And this is a page. So if I press the, the space, you can see that here we have the uh, virtual goods we, we have already defined. You can already buy them. And if you if we press the air, you can, obviously, it's empty, but you have a ranking. OK, this is a very simple example. Let me show you a more professional uh, game. The game I am going to show you now, it was started last week by, um, uh, by a video game studio called Artbox Game. As you can see, the logic is 
more complex, but still ver very simple. You can go deeper in, in each box, and you can see that the complexity in each level is, is very, very simple. Also, the scenes are, in this case, we have several scenes. This is the, the, the splash, and this is the gaming part. The game is a typical puzzle where you can you have to combine you have to combine two or more goals of the same color, and so the objective is to liberate all all of them. Okay. Okay, so I'm going back to the presentation. Not here, where are you? Ah, um, sorry. Okay, how, how we are using Google Cloud Engine uh, to create all, all this solution. So this is an overview of, of our architecture. Uh, we are uh, using almost all the services. The I, I don't know if you yes. This is an overview of our architecture. In the in the top left side, uh, you can see that we are using uh, App Engine, uh, uh, the uh, platform as a service uh, from Google, uh, to put there our um, website. So. Uh, App Engine is responsible for doing everything, uh, scaling and distribute all the all the demand. So it's great for us. And we have another part that we base on Compute Engine. The, it is the infrastructure as, as a service part. And we have a split our system in several web apps. Uh, each web app is a single page application. So we have a set of virtual machines uh, uh, to deal with each uh, type of content we are dealing with. And in front of it, we, have, we are using the uh, balancing, balancing service, so we can distribute all the requests uh, along all the virtual machines. We are also using um, cloud storage for to, in the demo, you, we have already seen that we have a lot of uh, graphics and uh, audio resources, so we are uh, using cloud storage to manage uh, all related with resources. And we are also using Cloud SQL and BigQuery to, for the analytics. So everything, uh, we are monitoring almost everything in the games and, and a BigQuery, the combination of BigQuery and Cloud SQL and SQL as a, a winner for us. And then we are also using Redis and MongoDB uh, to as a, a persistent stores. And this is more or less uh, our architecture. So to finish my presentation, I, I want to, to share with you our experience with Google Cloud Platform from two perspectives. The first one is a technical perspective. Uh, of course, this is, th these are the common things when you face uh, the creation of something online. The scalability is the number one. Of course, uh, we want to uh, scale uh, uh, depending on the demand, and, and we are uh, doing it well, Th thank you uh, to the compute engine. Global footprint is, uh, footprint is uh, also very important uh, because we want to be as close uh, as possible uh, uh, with our final users. And um, Google is uh, divided in three different regions and between three of our, or four zones in each region, so it's uh, also great for us. Uh, performance, uh, maybe. Google has uh, one of the best physical networks and thousands of uh, optic uh, fi uh, fiber cable al uh, along all the world. So uh, the performance is uh, really, really, really cool. And also the security in terms of privacy and also in terms of stability. But I think that in the context of four years from now, I think that there are also a startup perspective, and this is very important also for us because um, to deal with Google Cloud Platform, for us, it's a piece of cake. It's really easy. So we don't have a person uh, fully dedicated to this. It's, it's not the case. Uh, the, the responsibility to deal with, with the Google pl uh, Cloud Platform is among uh, of us. It is really flex flexible also because we can, you can go to the, a very high level and use App Engine for, for example, websites, but you can also create your own solution 
and Google is uh, providing um, a, a building block approach, so you can combine whatever you want with, with your own solution, is what we are doing. And of course, uh, the combination of all these advantages uh, means that uh, we can reduce the time to market and cost and also the risk. So uh, in conclusion, our experience using Google Cloud Platform is uh, very positive. And okay, this is Win5 is the WordPress of video games. So thank you very much for attending. John, if you have another. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. Just go back to my uh, presentation for a second. I just want to put the last slide of the uh, presentation that I made because uh, there's something nice that Google is going to be doing in four years from now. Is, uh, is there any chance you can go to my presentation so I can show it? We're going to be giving away uh, $10,000 for each startup that comes and talks to us. So we're going to be here. We've got a booth here that's been built right now. Don't ask me why we don't have it uh, since a couple of days, but uh, it's the way it is. Um, in any case, if you please come, uh, any startup will be more than welcome. We'll be more than welcome to talk to you. And um, just come over to the stand and talk to us. Uh, we are. As I said, going to be uh, giving uh, quite a few um, dollars away so we can actually make sure that you start to enjoy the benefits of the cloud platform exactly the same way as uh, Wimi5 did. Thanks very, much for, uh, thanks very much, everybody, for your attention, and uh, I'll talk to you. Bye. Bye.